Okay, so the next question is number five from Solon, S-O-L-O-N. On Joe Rogan's podcast, you talked about doing large doses of shrooms. What are the three biggest insights you've had about yourself because of drug use? So this is a this is a very interesting question, and I have to preface my answer, of course, with the warning that drugs, especially hallucinogenics, among other classes of drug, are very powerful and can have horrific effects if you use them improperly. And I was initially a neuroscience guy in college. I wanted to study with Barry Jacobs, who is a fascinating researcher, brilliant guy, who did, among other things, LSD research. Also looked at serotonin and cats as models, for example. Model <laughs> systems, not model. And one of the papers I wrote during my junior year was about, I think it was my junior year. Mm, may have been earlier. Actually, no, it was earlier because I was still in Forbes College. Okay. Uh, was about the comparing the similarity of states uh, correlated with LSD trips and REM sleep. So I was focused on memory and accelerating retention recall of certain facts and figures. So I wanted to look very closely at both of these states. And drugs can be used to accelerate learning pretty dramatically, whether that's huperzine A, which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, which is extremely powerful and is contraindicated with some medications, so do your homework or otherwise, you can dramatically enhance learning. With mushrooms specifically, uh, and I always have done, or, you know, hypothetically, eh, okay, forget hypothetically, uh, I've always done mushrooms in a very controlled environment. I have at least one spotter, and you cannot do this in an uncontrolled environment where you might injure or kill yourself like walk in front of a car. Not acceptable. And the, there are some excellent pieces on hallucinogens written by uh, people like Sam Harris, who is a PhD in neuroscience, also noted atheist, but a brilliant guy, and uh, has some, some very astute observations about hallucinogenic use. So I would check out his work as well. For me, number one, uh, I and most humans hyper-intellectualize and rationalize really, really, really well. So when I have peeled back the veil by using some of these mind-altering substances, I've been able to strip away all of the unnecessary bullshit complication that I layer on top of issues that at their core are very, very simple. And after I only typically, it's been, it's been actually a few years, but I, I did mushrooms in, in heavy dosages once per year as a, as a reset, effectively, to strip out some of these problems before they became a real chronic issues or psychoses or whatever, neuroses. So I've been able to end some of the most damaging relationships I've been in, uh, literally like that, uh, after having all of the complicated uh, excuse-making and rationalization stripped away. In which case, you really do need an extended period of time in that altered state. And that could be from five to eight hours, which, and you want to avoid anything that's going to spike your insulin levels, uh, which is why if you're having a bad trip and you want to get out, your friend should feed you a burrito or something. The rice and whatnot will, will take you right out immediately. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, uh, most crises, most must-dos don't matter at all. So if you're feeling stress about being compelled to do A, B, and C, staying in the hamster wheel, staying in the game, getting to the next level, whatever, I can't take two weeks off, three weeks off because then I'll never be able to get back in. I'll lose my footing, whether it's, let's just say, keeping in media. Uh, let's just use my case, like uh, blogging, Twitter, blah, 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 all that stuff, even writing books. So there is something in the back of my head that says, my God, if you stop doing all this stuff for X period of time, you will never be able to regain the footing that you had. You know, you have to strike while the iron is hot, and so forth and so on. And that, can, that can lead to some really self-destructive behavior. So it has also shown me that most of that is really complete nonsense. Uh, and the world will move on just fine if you back out and take a break for six months, in almost all cases, certainly if you're self-employed, uh, if you can set up systems to manage things, which was the subject of my first book, for the most part. All right. Uh, and then lastly is, for now, insight does not matter without action. It's very easy to have these transcendental experiences that change how you look at things, and two days later you're right back to the same stupid behavior. 
what I've found unique about mushrooms specifically, so psilocybin, is that I have a certain calm after effect for up to a few months. It's very dramatic. But in the, in the subsequent 48, 72 hours following one of these resets, I immediately just take action. I go down the list of issues I was hoping to address. And I, I always, med, not meditate in the, in the conventional sense, but I keep that inventory. I go through that list of issues I want to address during my trip prior to the trip. And afterwards, if I have found solutions or clarity on those issues, within the subsequent next few days, boom, 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 I go through and I take massive action, which is almost always some type of dramatic reduction and elimination, whether that's of relationships, of business projects, of noise in general, clutter, material clutter, whatever that might be. So those are a few of the things that I've noted. Uh, there are a couple of very interesting books on the subject. Uh, Food of the Gods, I believe that's Terence McKenna, that looks specifically at DMT or dimethyltryptamine. I wouldn't necessarily suggest, I, actually, I would absolutely not suggest doing something like 5-MeO DMT as a starter. You really have to lead up to these things. And like anything else, it requires, in my opinion, proper training or you could have the worst experience of your life. Or you could end up killing yourself or something really, really, really horrible could happen. So you don't take this stuff lightly. I recommend that you practice with lucid dreaming, which will help you distinguish between uh, reality and dream state or hallucinogenically induced state. Uh, if you look for Lucid Dreaming 101, I think, or Lucid Dreaming for Beginners in my name, I did do a blog post on this subject, Getting Good at Lucid Dreaming, which is uh, tremendously gratifying in its own right and can accelerate learning really dramatically. So hopefully that helps, and we will move on to the next question. But to reiterate my warning, do not, do not, do not, certainly don't take any of these drugs without having a full medical evaluation beforehand. Get your blood testing done. It's not that freaking hard. Talk to somebody about working through Quest or Genova or one of these guys to get proper blood draws and do the reviews. Uh, for our body has an appendix about how to get all these tests. But don't take this stuff lightly because you can really mess yourself up. All right, next question.